So we saw that faith is a strength of mind by which we grasp the truths that God has revealed and grasp God himself as the first truth. We make an option or we are drawn, inspired if you like, to make an option to believe God is revealing truly himself and what he's up to. But St. Thomas picks up from St. Augustine a distinction between three senses of the word credo. There can be credo deo, I believe God, credo deum, I believe about God, and credo in deum, I believe into God. Credo Deo and Credo Deum are classical Latin uses. So Credo Deo, I believe God, means I believe God, I trust God to tell us truly about himself and what he's up to. And Credo Deum, I believe about God, in fact, involves believing all those truths about God and his ways, which are revealed to us. But there's a peculiar Christian usage, not a classical usage, which of course we find in the Creed, credo in unum deum patrem, et in unum dominum Jesum Christum, et in spiritum sanctum, which literally means I believe into God the Father and one Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. That's a non-classical usage. It's found in the New Testament, in the Greek New Testament, probably because the Greek New Testament is influenced by Hebrew idiom, and in Hebrew, the verbs for believing and trusting are often followed by a preposition, but or le. You rest your trust upon someone, and so on. So in St. John's Gospel, Jesus says things like, You believe into God, believe also into me. And St. Paul says, We have believed into the Lord Jesus Christ. And St. Augustine and St. Thomas following him see this aspect of the act of faith, believing into God, as effectively faith as a personal journey into the triune God, a journey empowered by love. So anyone who believes, even if he's in a state of mortal sin, can say credo deo and credo deum. You can believe the truth about God, even if you are in a state of mortal sin. But credo in deum, I believe into God, is an act of faith made by the church, animated by the Holy Spirit, and made by all those who are in a state of grace, who love God, who are journeying into God by love. So this is what St Paul is referring to when he speaks of faith working by love. In a kind of technical sense, um, the act of faith made by someone in a state of mortal sin is unformed faith. It's an act of faith, but not formed by charity. Someone who is in a state of grace and professes his or her faith into God is exercising a formed faith. Just as the soul forms the body into a living body, charity, love, forms faith and the other virtues into a real life, an integrated life, that
that will grow into the life of glory. So faith has to be personal, formed by love, and there are other ways in which faith is also meant to be personal. I mention the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which attune us to the instincts of the Holy Spirit. And in connection with the virtue of faith, St Thomas speaks of the gifts of intellectus and scientia, insight and knowledge. Intellectus basically gives us a feel for the beauty of the faith, for how right it is. It gives us a sense of the beauty of what God has revealed as we begin to see things from the perspective of the Holy Spirit. And sciencia knowledge is the Holy Spirit giving us the right instincts for overcoming difficulties to do with the faith and how to defend the faith when we are challenged. Jesus promised that when we are had up, then the Holy Spirit will give us things to say. So faith is personal rather than private. And it's worth mentioning that faith is compatible with certain factual errors due to our human situation. So for 30 years or so, many Jewish people had a saving faith, believing that the Messiah would be born, though in fact the Messiah had been born. It's just that it wasn't public knowledge. So our personal situation also can have some effect on how faith is cached in our lives. And there's finally something else personal that's worth mentioning. St Thomas also discusses the charismatic gifts, as we would call them, that's as a group in Prima Secundae 111. And the charismatic gifts that St Paul lists include faith, not the virtue of faith that we all are meant to have, but a kind of infectious faith that certain people are given that empowers them to exercise their charism to bring others to the faith.